Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to have you here again with us as we continue our depression and anxiety recovery program. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you all received today the handouts. Uh, I sent several to you today by attachment. There's one person I know I still need to mail to. I haven't forgotten. If you have not been getting the materials, let me know. I will give you my email address. It is T as in Tom, C as in Cat, 9786 at AOL.com. I want to make sure everybody has access to the materials, particularly the one I sent tonight, the two attachments on the content of tonight's really, the nutritional things you can do to support your brain because tonight is very important. Just to remind you again, it's every Tuesday night at seven o'clock. This is the third of eight sessions. There will be follow-up. At some point, I'm gonna ask you which of you folks are the ones that are actually watching of all the lists I have so I can follow up with you afterwards. Tonight again, our topic is the third one, nutrition for the brain. With these thoughts, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we begin. Loving Heavenly Father, I pray help us to realize the wonderful creation that is the human brain. Help us to understand better how it works, what it needs to function best, and inspire us through your spirit, convict us to make the necessary changes so that we can optimally think, have proper moods, and use our brains for your service. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read you, this is Diderot's pro proverb. Doctors are working to preserve our health and cooks to destroy it. But the latter, meaning the cooks, are often the most successful at their goal. A little bit of tongue in cheek, but he's making a point about the importance of nutrition for your health, and as a part of your health, of course, would be the point of this seminar, your moods, how you handle stress and anxiety, and so forth. Hippocrates once said, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And as you pay attention to the literature that exists, certainly on the internet, more and more it's being recognized the importance of nutrition for every area of health and mental functioning. I even read an interesting book recently that said that the only research that shows true success against alcoholism is nutritional therapies and nutritional changes in the diet. When we say we are what we eat, well, there's nothing more true than that. Every cell of your body, every nerve cell, everything is based on the nutrition you take in and the formulation of the nerve cells and other cells and the process of replication that takes place. All of your respiration, circulation, all of it, elimination is all based on functioning well when we take in the nutrients that we need. Your brain is very vulnerable if the nutrition is poor. We talked already a little bit about compromised frontal lobe functioning and the frontal lobes are highly affected by your diet, for example. Another man, a doctor said, food is our first and best medicine. I agree, the research I did on depression with the eight health laws really brings out that the modern medical journals are beginning to recognize more and more an area which they were not originally trained in and need training in, which is nutrition which is why the role of the nutritionist and the naturopath working along with the allopath is extremely important. And many cancer centers today are now hiring nutritionists and naturopaths to assist in the cancer protocol. The most, this nutrition is the most overlooked area of diminished cognitive skills, depression, and anxiety, yet it can have profound influences as the little Diddy says, good food, good mood, and it's true. Many of the problems of impulsivity, extreme anger, extreme anxiety, depression, 
poor memory, difficulty in thinking are due to lack of nutrition. I'll have some research later, but all the research shows, for example, with children, that if they eat a good diet, particularly a good breakfast, get some exercise and fresh air, that their memory, their IQ levels, their attention span, their creativity, and even their sleep are greatly impacted in a positive way. All of us need to take much more seriously what we're putting into our body. We are not cast iron stoves that can just handle anything. And all the research you may, I'm sure you're probably aware of, the Western diet is killing people, increasing tremendously degenerate disease, such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, high blood pressure, and so forth. And we are beginning to shift. People are getting more health conscious, and we need to be more all the time. <clears throat> Nutrition's role in depression recovery cannot be overstated. Most of the cravings that we have for what we call junk food is really indicative of a nutritional deficiency, but we don't hear the cries of the body well. Overeating, by the way, can also be a symptom of being too dehydrated. You have listed there some things, vitamin B3 and 6, vitamin C and folic acid. We'll talk about those in a moment. Those are some of the things that you need for a healthy diet. But this cannot be underestimated. If you want to be successful in this program and you're not necessarily eating all the things you should, you must make, in some cases, major changes, but healthy ones. I'll give an example. And then I want you to check against what I present tonight because I have heard these presentations by my giving them myself in the past and began to implement them as well. My breakfast this morning was a piece of whole green toast with some almond butter on it, and then uh, oatmeal with sesame seed, flax seed, and uh, wheat germ on it, in addition to berries, pistachios, macadamia nuts, uh, applesauce, and peaches, and then I also ate a banana with some kiwi. And you'll see tonight why I'm doing that, because I want my brain to function at the highest capacity. Please pay attention. Once a nutritional change is made, it takes seven to 10 days for a difference to be noted. Then there is gradual improvement, and it will continue. Some clues of a nutritional problem include eating a lot of junk food or meat. By the way, why do we call it junk food? Because it's junk. It's bad for us. There is no nutrition in most junk foods, and yet you utilize a lot of calories and nutrients in the digestive process, so junk foods leave you deficient nutritionally. Then there's also sugar and carbohydrate addiction, where you feel better after the sugar, but it temporarily elevates serotonin levels. It causes a dopamine high, but then your blood crashes and your actual neurotransmitter levels are lower than they were before because it stripped the body. White refined sugar, I've mentioned it already, you should eliminate from your diet if you're a depressed person or even otherwise. It throws off all your mineral balances, distorts your immune system, compromises your frontal lobes, causes bacteria buildup in the upper respiratory passages in the bloodstream and many other things. Another area is a low B12 or folate level. These are some definite indicatives of a problem nutritionally. These are some major hits that I call them that contribute to depression. We will cover these more. And by the way, I will have under each area a list of some foods you might want to be taking notes. They're also in the handout I sent you. At the end of the lecture tonight, I will also list some foods again in these areas to give you enough time to be exposed to them. I'm going to try to go slowly tonight so that you have time to assimilate what I'm presenting. It's presented simply. It's not any biochemistry or anything. It's just some basic brain nutrients which help brain transmitters, neurotransmitters, to work. Some of these hits include an ins insufficient dietary tryptophan because it's converted to serotonin, melatonin, and niacin or vitamin B3, and all those things are very important for your health and your brain. And if you don't have enough tryptophan from dietary sources, it causes a problem. It is the least abundant amino acid in the diet. 
And its conversion to 5-HTP as a part of the conversion process is also inhibited by stress or insulin resistance, which is where your body is having difficulty utilizing its insulin correctly, which can be a pre-diabetic condition leading to diabetes. Stress throws off your mineral balances, your calcium and potassium as well. So you need to make sure, and many of the things we present tonight for the brain also impact your immune system and your nervous system's ability to function as well. Also magnesium or vitamin six, B6 deficiency, lack of light, and increasing age are all factors that harm the utilization of dietary tryptophan. This is some further thoughts on stress-prone people and nutrition and nutritional deficiencies. And I suspect most of you should pay attention because stress is such a part of our society today, certainly at this time with the disease, with all the unrest in society, with all the financial issues that people are facing, with all the just stress in relationships and marriage at the workplace and so forth, people face a lot of stress and thus need a balanced life, need their exercise, their rest and diet to be able to cope with it. Stress-prone people have a higher risk of brain-deficient levels of serotonin, which is related to the tryptophan issue. Higher levels of natural carbohydrates will increase mood and personal control. And if you have lower levels of that, then you have a problem with personal control, emotional and otherwise. Good carbohydrates, what we call complex carbohydrates, prevent lowered levels of serotonin during stress because of their effect, again, on tryptophan. So stress basically leads to that deficient level of serotonin as well as depletion of your calcium, magnesium, and potassium and so forth. And so we need to take an honest look at it. It also depletes your vitamin B levels. Let's talk about tryptophan for a minute. People who do take either supplementation or add it in the area of foods in their diet, improve their depression and seasonal affective disorder called SAD, we talked about that it's also very prevalent with women. That's why we talked about light therapy. Tryptophan will also help you against this kind of depression. It helps improve insomnia. And if you have a snoring problem, here it is. It actually helps with obstructive sleep apnea. And it also helps with nicotine withdrawal, as well as some other addiction withdrawals. Tryptophan is very important. Here are some foods that are high in tryptophan. Now, most of these, I'm going to tell you, I take for that very reason, because I, of course, study this. Your oats, I had oatmeal today. Tofu, raw, firm, is high in tryptophan. I had tofu yesterday. Flax seeds I had today. Black walnuts, dried. Sunflower seeds and kernels, I put those on my salad. Sesame seeds, I put those on my cereal and my salad. Chia seeds, I put on my salad. Spirulina, I get through a green drink that I do, and pumpkin seeds I put on my salad. These are all things that are high in tryptophan. And most of these are inexpensive. Certainly flaxseed and oats and chia seeds and pumpkin seeds are very cheap. By the way, women, sesame seeds are also a good source of calcium, particularly for women because they're high vulnerability to getting osteoporosis through lack of upper body exercise. And well, let's talk about tyrosine now, which is another area, a deficiency. If you take supplementation, you have reduced headaches, stress, fatigue, muscle aches, and sleepiness. Supplementation will, of tyrosine will improve you in mental states, such as happiness and mental clarity, better cognitive skills, a feeling of vigor, and even improvement in blood pressure. So these are all many benefits. I also take beet powder, by the way, for blood pressure, as the nitric oxide, nitric oxide is very good for the body. Two amino acids, as I mentioned again, are tryptophan and tyrosine. Nuts and seeds are high in these amino acids. Get a lot of nuts and seeds for their protein, for their fiber, 
for their iron, for their minerals, and for those amino acids, tryptophan and tyrosine. They should, you should eat about five, six nuts at least a day in your diet. Here are some foods going further that are high in tyrosine. Mustard greens, tomatoes are very high in tyrosine, both fresh tomatoes as well as cooked tomatoes. Cooked tomatoes are also high in a substance men that helps protect the prostate gland against prostate cancer. Lima beans, tofu, silk and firm, I use that a lot for scrambled tofu as well as tofu egg salad sandwiches. My wife does a wonderful job with that. Edamame, which is a type of soybean, you can get that in the frozen section of the store. Almonds, oats, sunflower seeds, wheat germ, and pumpkin seed. You notice there's a lot of overlap. Some of the things that are good for these different amino acids are in several of the things. So if you do them, you get the benefit of both. So eat a lot of wheat germ and pumpkin seed and sunflower and oats and almonds and so forth uh, in your diet. And you'll be very blessed for doing so. Another area we want to talk about is the effect of high cholesterol on the brain. Your brain needs cholesterol to produce dopamine and your body does produce naturally some cholesterol but it's not the cholesterol you get from animal products and dairy. Thus elevated levels of cholesterol can be problematic for the brain. It's also an issue for other areas as we know Cholesterol alone is not the problem for your cardiovascular system. It's also a matter of all the trans fats in your diet and other issues that attach itself to the cholesterol. But certainly, the cholesterol is a factor. Patients with major depression tend to have significantly higher levels of cholesterol than healthy adults. Depressed patients with elevated cholesterol have a poor prognosis for treatment response, even for depression. Lowering cholesterol levels improves depression and mood and decreases impulsivity. People don't know that, that high levels of cholesterol can of course be bad for the heart, but also increase impulsivity because it contributes to compromising the frontal lobes and thus your social judgment and emotional control. Please note there is zero cholesterol in fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. Your only source of bad cholesterol is from meat, dairy products, and so forth, cheese. Your body produces enough healthy cholesterol by a good diet. And yet it brings it down considerably on a vegetarian diet so you don't have the problems. I had my cholesterol, I've been a vegetarian now for oh, at least 25 years, and my cholesterol, last time I had it tested, was 97. It's just very low. The doctor's always surprised from my age, but it's because of the way that we eat. Let's talk about something else now, which is really important for your brain, and everybody should start doing this to aid in your depression recovery program. It's the issue of the health benefits of omega-3 oil. I'm sure you've heard of this. It's a little small, I'll read them. Omega-3 lowers cholesterol, so there it would help with your cholesterol situation. Reduces the symptoms of PMS in women. Helps to prevent cancer. Great for your eyes, reduces blood pressure, keeps your skin healthy, reduces the risk of heart disease, helps to prevent diabetes, soothes the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, and protects your brain. And it's so simple, you can get this simply by buying some flaxseed powder or seeds and grinding into powder. It's so cheap, and yet the health benefits are incredible. Here again are some of the benefits as well as a few other ones. Omega-3 brain benefits include improved frontal lobe functioning, which is where your moral and decision-making powers are, increase energy and vigor, improve reaction time, improve attention, improve mood, parents for children, improve test scores. Children should be taking this. Helps to prevent depression and anxiety in women in distress. 
decreases anger and impulsivity, and depressed have a major positive response to adding it. I take 1,200 milligrams of flaxseed for my omega-3 every day in a capsule. I also put some flaxseed powder on my cereal and also on my salad to try to get up to about 1,400 milligrams a day, which is what Nedley recommends. What are the sources of omega-3? The reason we ask this is you've probably heard that the best source is fish oil. We're going to talk about that in a moment. I'm going to suggest to you that no, fish oil is not the healthiest way to get your omega-3 oils. There's 10 different plant sources that are high, berries, hemp seeds, leafy greens, winter squash, beans, all your brassica vegetables like cauliflower and cabbage, flax seeds, edamame, and chia seeds, as well as black walnuts. These are all on your list, by the way, that I sent you. I can read them again. Berries, hemp seeds, leafy greens, particularly the darker ones, because they're also higher in calcium, winter squash, beans of all types, brassica vegetables, flaxseed, edamame, chia seed, and black walnuts. Garbanzo beans are particularly high in omega-3, but all the beans are good for other reasons as well. They help increase the amount of serotonin in the brain as well. So there's plenty of plant sources to get your omega-3. Now, why are we not recommending fish oil for your omega-3? It's very simple. The amount of mercury levels and other chemicals and so forth in the water found in the fish makes it highly problematic. Mercury is very damaging to the brain, can increase the risk of cancer, and there are some fish that are very high in mercury, others are a little lower, but none of them are safe to take because of the condition of our oceans today. And Somebody will say, well, Jesus ate fish. That's true, that was 2,000 years ago when we weren't dumping all our chemicals into the ocean and destroying our ecosystem. There is a link between the symptoms in children with autism and the symptoms of mercury poisoning in children. How similar? It's the exact same symptoms. I am not saying this is proof that mercury poisoning caused autism, but it isn't a coincidence because mercury poisoning would damage the brain and thus could lead to autism as well as other neurological dysfunctions. This is not a minor issue. And by the way, many people have mercury amalgams in their teeth that need to be removed because those will break down into a powder, leach into the system, and give you elevated levels of mercury by that as well. Your doctors or your dentists are aware of this and they will be happy to replace them. Of course, it costs some money, but it's a classic pay me now or pay me later because you don't want the long-term effects of that leaching into your body. Interesting, too, the symptoms of mercury poisoning are very similar to that of ADHD, or hyperactive children. Both have poor concentration, poor attention span, speech problems, comprehension problems, difficulty with cognitive skills, and many social, emotional, behavioral problems. I don't think yet that we have even dredged the surface of all the things causing hyperactivity in children. I know when I was a school psychologist, they were giving children Ritalin. And I began to realize that the issues were far broader nutritionally and needed to be addressed. And I'm afraid some of the things that we're presenting to children in foods, unless we're being careful, is contributing to lowered IQ levels and other kinds of health and social emotional problems. Mercury toxicity in the brain, these are all the things that you can lead to. Insomnia, nervousness, hallucinations, memory loss, headache, dizziness, anxiety, irritability, daytime drowsiness, emotional instability, depression, and poor cognitive functioning. Now obviously there are other things that can also contribute and cause these areas. But nevertheless, I hope by motivating you to not eat fish, or other sources that are highly infiltrated by mercury and thus pick alternatives that, to get your omega-3 oils without taking these risks. And if you have some of these symptoms, you might want to get a blood test to make sure that mercury levels are not the problem. Um, it could also be blood sugar disorder and other factors. Many people with depression should get a full range of blood tests, particularly checking for those nutrients that contribute to depression. 
and they are possible to get. If you don't know where else to go for that, you can go on to Neil Nedley's website and he will actually help you get blood tests to have these things checked. Another area we're going to talk about is vitamin B1 or thiamine, another area that the brain needs, very much so. Here are some sources of this thiamine deficiency. Of course, thiamine deficiency, again, does contribute to depressed mood, anxiety, and things of that nature. And look how simple it is to replace and upgrade your nutritional levels. Brown rice, which, by the way, is far superior to white rice because you have all the nutrients and the fiber and so forth that's there that's stripped out of the white rice. I had a, when I was in Mongolia as a missionary, the Mongolians told me that white rice, white salt, and white sugar were better foods because they were white and thus purer for you. Actually, the opposite's true. They're very bad for you. Wheat germ, macadamia nuts, flaxseed, here it is again, oats, oat bran, pistachio nuts, and sunflower seeds. Again, there's a lot of overlap between these and the other areas. These are all high in vitamin B1 or thiamine which is good for your central nervous system, your frontal lobes, and your emotional centers of the brain. Brown rice, wheat germ, macadamia nuts, flaxseed, oats, oat bran, pistachio nuts, and sunflower seeds. Here's a few other ones. Your beans, pinto, soybeans, black beans, and navy beans and lentils are all high in thiamine. So is asparagus. Um, I highly recommend beans in your diet for several reasons, because of the quality protein, the fiber in it, the improvement to the brain's neurotransmitters, um, the balancing of your blood sugar levels have many, many wonderful benefits, and again, it's very inexpensive. Another area is iron deficiency. This is probably something that women may struggle with more than men, but if man's diet is deficient, he can also have it. It leads, of course, to lowered oxygen levels, tiredness and being just weak in general. It leads to productivity problems, sleepiness. Uh, it's a serious problem in some people because our modern diet of fast foods is seriously lacking in certain nutrients, including iron. Very high in cholesterol, very high in fat, very high in animal protein, but low in nutritional value. Some of the symptoms and signs of iron deficiency are fatigue and tiredness, shortness of breath, depression, as we're looking at, of course, hair loss can be that, restless leg syndrome, frequent headaches, increased sensitivity to cold, and brittle nails, even. If you have some of those symptoms, you need to at least have it checked out to make sure your iron levels are good. Women particularly struggle with this and need to be really attentive to their nutritional supplementation to avoid this. And there are many great vegan sources of iron. You don't have to eat meat and eggs to get iron. Some of the things listed here are cashews and other nuts, spinach and other dark green leafy vegetables, tomatoes and tomato paste, dark chocolate, by the way, and that's without the sugar and the cream, but dark chocolate itself has been found to be very healthy for many things, including iron. Kidney beans and other beans. Blackstrap molasses are very high in iron, so are raisins, by the way. Spirulina, apricots, quinoa. By the way, quinoa, I'll mention in a moment too, is also high in choline, which is very good for the brain. It's a grain that we don't eat enough. We should eat it more in our diet. It's very healthy to eat quinoa. Then pumpkin seeds, tempeh and tofu. I love tempeh, by the way. I also like tofu. These are all things that are high in iron for you to take in your body. Here again is some of the ones listed. Quinoa, spinach is another one of the deep, dark green leafy vegetables. Soy products, beets, soybeans, whole grain wheat, barley, and flaxseed. Notice if you just take flaxseed, you're getting about three or four of the brain nutrients you need. Uh, just by that one product. Um, it improves memory, focus, mood, and is critical for manufacturing acetylcholine, which is a brain neurotransmitter, very important for mental functioning. Another one is Reservatrol. I want to tell you a story about this. Reservatrol is very 
important for strengthening the heart and cardiovascular system. It also it plays a very important role in reducing heart disease. It has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. And more and more, the research is coming out that one of the major reasons for dementia, Alzheimer's, as well as some forms of depression, is inflammation of the brain. And thus, everything we can do to lower the inflammation of the brain helps. Turmeric, for example, and flaxseed are both anti-inflammatories, as well as resveratrol. Resveratrol, again, has positive proven health and cardiovascular benefits, anti-diabetic effects, regulating blood sugar levels, anti-inflammatory for pain relief of arthritis, may reduce plaque formation in the brain, which leads to Alzheimer's, and antiviral effects on certain influenza and HSV viruses. Did you catch that? Antiviral effects. Most berries have strong antioxidant phytochemical effects, including fighting against the effects of the spread of viruses. Now, the story I want to tell you about Reservatrol, you may have heard that wine, which of course has grapes in it, wine has the result in France of they have the lowest rate of heart disease in the world. And that's true. What they don't tell you is what Paul Harvey would say. I want to hear the rest of the story. The French have the highest rate in the world of death from cirrhosis of the liver because of the alcohol in the wine. In other words, you can get the benefits of Reservatrol without drinking wine. Just eat your grapes and other foods, berries that have the Reservatrol in it. You don't need the alcohol. Alcohol has a short-term effect of enlarging your blood vessels, but the long-term effect is terrible on the liver and the pancreas and so forth. Again, Reservatrol benefits include improves the blood flow to the brain by up to 30%. Just think about that. Eating some grapes can increase your blood flow to the brain by up to 30%. Helps protect the brain from dementia. So do black blueberries and other berries. I mentioned blueberries in the first lecture. Berries are very protective against the aging of the brain. It's extremely important that you eat those as much as you can. My wife and I eat blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries almost every day as long as we can get them. Uh, Reservatrol protects against the toxicity of beta amyloid protein, which is what causes dementia and Alzheimer's, and also against free radical damage, which is basically saying the aging of your cells prematurely. It keeps the brain longer. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of eating fruits in general and grapes and berries specifically in your diet for vitamin C and many other things in addition to the benefits of Reservatrol. Here again is a listing a lot of the benefits of Reservatrol. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, protects against infection, protects from ischemia, heart protective or cardio protective, prevents aging, Neuroprotector protects the central nervous system, reduces obesity, it's an antiviral, and it helps prevent cancer. Those are extremely strong benefits from just eating a few berries every day. And it's a classic example of pay me now or pay me later. Do you want to spend $10 on grapes or $500,000 on cancer treatment? It's really that simple. We want to look now as well at something else, and that's obesity and its link to depression. There's a very vicious cycle between the two. Obesity can cause depression because it leads to poor self-image, poor self-esteem, ostracism, and discrimination. But depression can also cause obesity because depression leads to poor food choices, overeating, less exercise, no movement, less oxygen to the brain, and thus you don't move, and thus you end up getting more depressed and more fat at the same time. They're very much related to it. Obviously, obesity to a large degree, not in all cases, but a large degree is due to nutritional deficiencies. And this chart shows you there's a lot of factors feeding into this issue. Some are genetics, um, stress, infections, um, some microbes in the body, but a lot of it is poor diet, a sedentary lifestyle, and they all feed and contribute and result in depression and obesity. 
if you're overweight, just losing five pounds can have a major impact on your mood levels. 10 good reasons to study depression and obesity together are these. The two disorders frequently coexist in the same patient. Depression can cause obesity. Antidepressants actually cause weight gain. Most people don't know that. And by the way, if the doctor prescribes you an antidepressant without doing a thorough blood study and other studies on you, the antidepressant can actually make you more depressed and more suicidal. They found that out with Prozac, for example. It has to be a differential diagnosis done carefully before those medications are prescribed. I'll say very strong, because I used to be a psychologist, if doctors prescribe antidepressants without doing a full workup, that's malpractice in my opinion. It simply is not the right thing to do. It might get you out of the office quick, but it might get you into the grave quicker. Obesity can cause depression, and obesity treatments can cause depression and suicidality. Uh, no question, there's something called serotonin uptake. If you take a medication that it doesn't deal with that problem, it can reverse the problem and make you worse. Uh, you don't have to remember that, but just know that Prozac isn't meant for everybody. Obesity, of course, is associated with lower energy levels. After a meal, blood sugar levels in excess of 140 milligrams DL is associated with fatigue. We all know sometimes we fall asleep after we eat when our blood sugar rises after a meal. If you overeat, it particularly causes that. Getting on a weight loss program and losing more than five pounds can bring about improved energy levels and mood. Weight loss, of course, improves your overall blood sugar levels, your blood pressure and circulation, more oxygen to the brain, everything else. It's very important to get down to more manageable weight. By the way, a skinny person who overeats is in worse shape than a heavy person who doesn't overeat and gets some exercise. Being skinny alone is not the only, you need your exercise and proper nutrition. For example, Jim Fix, the runner, had a heart attack when he was a strong multi-distance runner. So let's talk about weight loss. Weight loss is not that hard to do. I'm gonna add one thing which will help as well. No snacks, all these junk foods of course are no good. Drink only water between meals. If you drink juices and other things, you're simply adding calories that have to be digested. Um, drink those only right before a meal, a little bit before a meal. Eat a good breakfast, which I do. My wife and I love breakfast and a moderate lunch. Only fruit for dinner, if at all. Maybe a little swieback. But you should not eat too much for supper. A little bit maybe, um, but not much. Eliminate white refined sugar and fatty foods. Emphasize high fiber foods because they pass through the body quicker. The calories are not as easily assimilated by the body, but the nutrients are, and thus you don't take in as many calories. And as we've already talked about, you should be getting moderate exercise for 45 minutes a day. Remember we talked about the benefits of interval training as really most beneficial for the brain and the heart. It's not hard to lose weight. Another one to do is to alkalize your body. Get a lot of green leafy vegetables, eat a lot of fruits as well. Get away from your acidic foods like peanut butter, coffee, tea, chocolate, meat, all these things are very acidic, they cause inflammation, and when your body is acidic, it tends to store the fats in the cells more than release them out of the body, and thus you gain weight. Thus, if you follow a vegetarian diet and a good exercise program and the other health laws, all of them tend your body to an alkaline side and are helpful in losing weight. Let's talk about folic acid, another brain nutrient needed. The benefits include preventing birth defects. By the way, mothers, you should be on a nutritional program before you get pregnant to help the baby when it comes along. Promotes heart health. Uh, it's a natural depression remedy. It reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. Helps you break down your triglycerides, which are the items that also connect with your cholesterol to cause a problem in the blood veins, causing damage and clots and so forth. Decreases the risk of colon cancer and may lower your homocysteine levels. 
Here's 12 foods that are rich in folate, leafy green vegetables, asparagus, broccoli, your papaya, and oranges. Orange juice, by the way, as well. But I would get the one with the pulp in it because it doesn't cause your blood sugar to rise as quickly. Avocado, your seeds and nuts. Here they are again. Seeds and nuts are a very valuable part of your diet. Brussels sprouts, your beans, peas, and lentils. There again, they're very good as well. Okra, cauliflower, beets, and bell peppers. Bell peppers, by the way, are also very high in vitamin C, which is good for the body. Some other foods high in folate include your fortified bread, your cereals, and brown rice, your beans, orange juice, and spinach. They're all very high in this nutrient for your brain. Let's talk about the benefits of breakfast in general. Many people rush off and don't eat much breakfast assuming they'll make up for it at lunch. But actually in the morning is when you need the nutrients and the glucose for brain energy, for thinking skills, proper reaction time, judgment, and so forth. Uh, it boosts your brain power, fuels your empty tank, it builds better bodies, uh, it may tend to increase Skipping breakfast may increase hunger throughout the day, leading to more eating of junk. And eating breakfast may help your heart, digestion, and your bones, and may meet the daily dietary requirements. When I worked as a school psychologist, I noticed a number of teachers complaining about hyperactive students about 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, I got suspicious and went in the teacher's lounge about 10 o'clock while they sat there eating their donuts and drinking their coffee. It was the teachers that were hyperactive at 11 o'clock, not the students. They were pouring all the sugar and refined carbohydrates as well as caffeine in the diet without having eaten a good breakfast, and it was really causing a problem. So let's go over some of these things we've listed now. These are the brain essentials that you need. And I will again have some charts, again, going over these foods. Again, I gave you a handout listing all of these items with the foods that are related to them. I hope you will download those and utilize them in your diet. It takes some planning, it takes some discipline, it takes some thinking, even before you go shopping. So you make sure that you have these in your home in the way of foods or supplementation to aid your health. Tryptophan, tyrosine, elimination of animal cholesterol, iron, thiamine, choline, Reservatrol, omega-3, folate, and related is vitamin B12. Let's take a look again at some foods that are in these areas. High tryptophan foods include pumpkin, sunflower, and sesame seeds, tofu, cauliflower, walnuts, flaxseed, and grapes. Again, note, you'll notice in these lists the overlap. For example, the seeds, tofu, walnuts, flaxseed, and grapes are mentioned over and over again because they're very beneficial to many nutrients that the brain needs. High tyrosine foods include almonds, lentils, whole grains, wheat and oats, bananas, lima beans, avocados, and soybeans, in addition to the things that I listed. Um, your nuts, of course. Bananas, by the way, are very high in them. Your iron-rich foods, raisins, soybeans, sesame seeds, cashews, your dark green leafy vegetables, quinoa, tomatoes, and so forth are all high in iron. Actually, we have such access to fresh and raw food in the produce section of our stores that no one should be deficient in either protein or iron. It's all available to you. Other ones that help with thiamine and related to the previous areas, macadamia nuts, pistachios, edamame, and navy beans. In addition to peas, squash, asparagus, black beans, and so forth. They're all high in vitamin B1. Choline, which is very important for the brain. One of the best sources is quinoa, as I mentioned. And quinoa is so cheap and easy to make. You can make it and mix it with vegetables or beans or other things. Uh, it's very good for the diet. It's light, easy to digest. Spinach, green soybeans, beets, 
soy and almonds. Almonds, again, are mentioned several times as well, as well as the other nuts. Very good for the brain. Leads to the formation of acetylcholine. Here again, we mentioned resveratrol, your red grapes, your blueberries, your blackberries, cranberries, peanuts, black grapes, and green grapes are all high in resveratrol, and the benefits of resveratrol are incredibly high for little investment. We all enjoy eating these things anyway, and I think if you're going to be on a health program, be eating things you enjoy. Omega-3 oils. Flaxseed and chia seeds are one of the best, easy, cheap sources of it. Hemp seeds as well, avocado, walnuts, pecans, red bell peppers, blueberries, romaine lettuce, spinach, and there again, beans. I would highly recommend everybody who wants to go on a depression recovery program immediately start taking an omega-3 oils. You will find it very strengthening very quickly to the brain. Folate, there's foods that are rich in folate including black eyed peas, pinto beans, black beans, chickpeas, asparagus and spinach, all your dark green leafy vegetables, uh, papaya and oranges again, uh, okra, cauliflower and red bell peppers are also good sources. Vitamin B12. There is a concern in the medical field that vegetarians cannot get enough vitamin B12 because they're found in high levels in your meat and dairy product. And that is true, they're high in those levels. If you eat a balanced diet of many different fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, your body actually produces in the mouth vitamin B12 to a degree. If you have concerns, I, I take a vitamin B12 supplement on occasion as well, Depressed people probably should take, and you get the metacobaline form of vitamin B12. Also, your plant-based milks, your almond milk and soy milk and so forth, have vitamin B12. Some of your fortified cereals and nutritional yeast, which vegetarians often use in cooking, is high in B12 as well. So, that's it for tonight. I hope that you will take very seriously what you put into your body, because as we say, you are what you eat, and that is very, very true. Another way of saying it, you think and you feel as you eat. Hope you enjoyed tonight. Please look for the email with the attachments. If you didn't get it, I will mention my email address again. It's T as in Tom, C as in Cat, 9786 at AOL.com. In French, they would say at a meal, bon appetit. And I encourage all of you to eat as though your brain matters most as a result, because it does. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I pray as we close tonight, I just pray your spirit convict all to make major changes in their diet, to eliminate white sugar and other junk food, white refined grains and salt, and replace it with fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, and other healthy things that provide the nutrients the brain needs for fullest functioning. Most of all, Father, help us to remember that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. To remember to think positively, to find things to be grateful for, and to trust you with our lives. I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night. See you next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock.